It was a pre-Crime Fest 2015 goal, along with a few other more substantial goals like safe house customization, that being the new female heister, Sydney. Lots of to-do has been made about Sydney, quite a fanfare, in fact. This could be because Overkill has mentioned her pretty frequently over the last few months, typically at the same time as safe house customization and skills beta and exciting new changes. Sydney might be the crocus that heralds the dawn of spring, as it were can't hurt that her voice actress is very pretty. But can I just say at this point that everyone in this game has a very strong jawline? I mean, even John Wick, who I take on good faith is modeled after Keanu Reeves, who has a almost absurdly consistently thin face, even now that he's in his 50s, even John here has a pretty beefy face. Now, Sydney's model is based off her voice actor, Georgia Van Quillenberg, and I'm gonna say that the in-game model is pretty representative. That being said, it looks to me that there's a fetish for massive slabs of jaw meat going around Overkill. Or does the engine just not render thin faces well? But then there's Jimmy, so I'm leaning towards all the Overkill model artists being old Polish grandmothers. James, you're so skinny, have more pierogi, they make you strong with big strong jaw. Like most of the other heisters, she's crude rude with oodles of tood. Down. And don't fucking move. Down on the ground. Stay down, little doggy. We got a taser. Taser's dead. What? Oh, Sit on my dick. Get up and Boy, kill me, Jimmy. Right on it. I would call this performance Aussie Biker Chick with Hint of Dominatrix. I don't find the performance itself very unique though, and I've heard Australians complain that she doesn't really speak like an Aussie. I don't need dingo shrimp me kangaroo on the bobby necessarily all the time, and if Sydney was a human being, I could totally say, yeah, she's an Australian, but she doesn't sound like it, and that's alright, but she's THE Australian heister in this comic book game, come on! Throw some more colloquialisms in there. I mean, they might not like it here, but as far as I know, hey, cunt, is how Australians say good morning. After reading an article from Sadir S. Samir about writing the character, it sounds like she was supposed to be crazy on the verge of mental. She doesn't sound like that, though. I've worked with people who are crazy. I know what crazy sounds like. I'm not exactly sure what kind of crazy they were going with here. What she does sound like is angry, hostile, aggressive, not crazy, not wild, not on the edge. Sydney sounds like Australian girl Houston, and pretty samey compared to the other heisters. Making her sound crazy could have been as simple as changing the way the lines were said. Not even what was written. Stay down, little doggy! Okay, that's a starting point. Here's my take on the line. Stay down! Little doggy! Make it messy. People who are actually on the edge sound a little awkward sometimes. Their emotions are more in control of them. Visually, I like her design. I love the hair. Something about those long side locks just appeals to me for some reason. The hair is sexy. The old tie suit combo is sexy. I just take issue with the performance. And not even the performance, maybe, but the direction. Now, on the offset, it would seem like we would be covering almost all this outfit up, since her perk deck seems armor-focused, but it ain't so. In fact, it seems like this deck, the Anarchist deck, actually favors dodge for some absurd numbers reasons. The first few cards of the deck involve trading tons of health for tons of armor. With the deck maxed out, you're getting about 330% more armor at the expense of about 87% of your health, if I'm doing the math right. Now, all this extra armor doesn't regenerate all at once, like usual. It regenerates slowly over time, at 5 points per second, similar to how muscle works. The more armor you're wearing, the further apart regeneration intervals are, but the more you regenerate during those intervals, to average the regeneration at that 5 points per second. This means you're going to have quite a bit of armor with the ICTV, but it's going to be hella slow to regenerate. On the other side of the spectrum, I've seen people reach 221 armor with just the two-piece suit, and have 15 to 20 dodge to boot. 
two-piece suit is probably the way to run this deck, although I can't argue with running it with the ICTV either, which makes it, interestingly, a good deck for both armor and dodge, with the lack of any health regen as a downside. I actually like that lack of health regen. It means that healing items are still important, but you can run into and out of combat fairly effectively and be able to come back from it solidly. The final card of the deck will grant 10 points of armor regen for dealing damage every 1.5 seconds, which dovetails really nicely with Bullseye, and further increases its value as a dodge deck, since you're in Fugitive anyways, why not get the dodge? The deck also dovetails nicely with Berserker, since you can get and maintain an under 25% health fairly easily. That level will be protected by your prodigious armor while you rack up kills with your now far more powerful weapons. Like the bootleg rifle, which actually isn't that powerful. With laser sights, stability boosts, and the sniper stock, it's stupidly stable, more so than any of the LMGs, at least without the bipod, and it's fairly accurate. Plus, you know, a hundred round magazine on an assault rifle. The bullets individually don't pack that much of a punch, however, and I had trouble downing cloakers on overkill. Let's put it that way. On Death Wish, it's not going to be your first choice. People are going to have to carry you while you're using this gun. I can't say what the post-beta changes are going to bring about to this balance, but at this point, it's not a good weapon for Death Witch. Its time to kill is too high. But like a lot of these weapons released with the character packs, it's just kind of fun to use. The sights are nice, the reload animation is neat, the little bullets kind of vanished out of the clear magazine, 10 out of 10 for trying, the shooting is a blast, and it is the only assault rifle with a 100 round magazine. So there's that. The Butterfly Knife is only brought down by Payday's melee system in general and by its attack speed. Like Jimmy's double knives, I feel like this knife should have been fast and fluid. I really like the charging up animation where she spins it around like apparently everyone who uses these knives can, and I think the whole attack cycle should look like that. Otherwise, it's kind of slow and weak, and I don't really like to use it as much as I like to look at it. Kudos to the animation though, just one step short in the balance. So, was this pack worth $4.99? Despite all the foreplay, no, not really. But if maybe two bucks were shaved up the price, I would say, yeah, probably. After all these heisters being offered for free across from paid heists, I got a little settled in that system. Yeah, no work went into this stuff, but this is the 15th heister being offered for a fourth of the original price of the game. It kind of brings up the question though, the way the little icons are set up on the select screen, Sydney fills out the last slot. So will there be any more heisters added to the game? I would prefer not, at least for a little while. I say work on the heisters you have now, flesh out Jiro's storyline, maybe put one of the heisters in peril. I want more details on these heisters individually. That would have more value to me than just another pretty face.